To Shemaiah of Nehelam, you shall say, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, You have sent letters in your name to all the people who are in Jerusalem, and to Zephaniah, the son of Messiah, the priest, and to all the priests, saying, The Lord has made you priest instead of Jehoiada the priest, to have charge in the house of the Lord over every madman who prophesies, to put him in the stocks and collar. Now why have you not rebuked Jeremiah of Anathoth, who is prophesying to you? For he has sent to us in Babylon, saying, Your exile will be long. Build houses and live in them, and plant gardens and eat their produce. Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the hearing of Jeremiah the prophet. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. Send to all the exiles, saying, Thus says the Lord concerning Shemaiah of Nehelam, Because Shemaiah has prophesied to you, when I did not send him, and has made you trust in a lie. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shemaiah of Nehelam and his descendants. He shall not have anyone living among this people to see the good that I will do to my people, says the Lord, for he has talked rebellion against the Lord. The word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Write in a book all the words that I have spoken to you. For behold, days are coming, says the Lord when I will restore the fortunes of my people, Israel and Judah, says the Lord, and I will bring them back to the land which I gave to their fathers, and they shall take possession of it. These are the words which the Lord spoke concerning Israel and Judah. Thus says the Lord, We have heard a cry of panic, of terror, and no peace. Ask me now and see. Can a man bear a child? Why then do I see every man with his hands on his loins like a woman in labor? Why has every face turned pale? Alas, that day is so great, there is none like it. It is a time of distress for Jacob, yet he shall be saved out of it. And it shall come to pass in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will break the yoke from off their neck, and I will burst their bonds. And strangers shall no more make servants of them, but they shall serve the Lord their God and David their king, whom I will raise up for them. Then fear not, O Jacob, my servant, says the Lord, nor be dismayed, O Israel. For behold, I will save you from afar, and your offspring from the land of their captivity. Jacob shall return, and have quiet and ease, and none shall make him afraid. For I am with you to save you, says the Lord. I will make a full end of all the nations among whom I scattered you. But of you I will not make a full end. I will chasten you in just measure, and I will by no means leave you unpunished. For thus says the Lord, your hurt is incurable, and your wound is grievous. There is none to uphold your cause, no medicine for your wound, no healing for you. All your lovers have forgotten you. They care nothing for you, for I have dealt you the blow of an enemy, the punishment of a merciless foe. Because your guilt is great, because your sins are flagrant, why do you cry out over your hurt? Your pain is incurable, because your guilt is great, because your sins are flagrant, I have done these things to you. Therefore all who devour you shall be devoured, and all your foes, every one of them, shall go into captivity. Those who despoil you shall become a spoil, and all who prey on you I will make a prey. For I will restore health to you, and your wounds I will heal, says the Lord, because they have called you an outcast. It is Zion for whom no one cares. Thus says the Lord, Behold, I will restore the fortunes of the tents of Jacob, and have compassion on his dwellings. The, sh the city shall be built upon its mound, and the place shall stand where it used to be. Out of them shall come songs of thanksgiving, and the voices of those who make merry. I will multiply them, and they shall not be few. I will make them honored, and they shall not be small. Their children shall be as they were of old, and their congregation shall be established before me, and I will punish all who oppress them. Their prince shall be one of themselves. Their ruler shall come forth from their midst. I will make them draw near, and he shall approach me. For who would dare of himself to approach me, says the Lord? And you shall be my people, and I will be your God. Behold the storm of the Lord. Wrath has gone forth, a whirling tempest. It will burn upon the head of the wicked. The fierce anger of the Lord will not turn back until he has executed and accomplished the intents, the intents of his mind. In the latter days you will understand this. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. 
Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness. When Israel sought for rest, the Lord appeared to him from afar. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. Again, I will build you and you shall be built, O virgin Israel. Again, you shall adorn yourself with timbrels and shall go forth in the dance of the merrymakers. Again, you shall plant vineyards upon the mountains of Samaria. The planter shall plant and shall enjoy the fruit. For there shall be a day when watchmen will call in the hill of con- in the hill country of Ephraim. Arise and let us go up to Zion to the Lord our God. For thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, the Lord has saved his people, the remnant of Israel. Behold, I will bring them from the north country and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth, among them the blind and the lame, the woman with child and her who has labor pains together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping, they shall come, and with consolations, I will lead them back. I will make them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the, in, in the islands afar off. Say, he who, is scattered, he who scattered Israel will gather him, and will keep him as a shepherd keeps his flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob, and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall be like a watered garden, and they shall languish no more. Then shall the maidens rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning to joy. I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. I will feast the soul of the priests with abundance, and my people shall be satisfied with my goodness, says the Lord. Thus says the Lord, a voice is heard in Ramah, lamentation and bitter weeping. Rachel is weeping for her children. She refuses to be comforted for her children, because they are not. Thus says the Lord, Keep your voice from weeping, and your eyes from tears. For your work shall be rewarded, says the Lord, and they shall come back from the land of the the enemy. There is hope for your future, says the Lord, and your children shall come back to their own country. I have heard Ephraim bemoaning. You have chastened me, and I was chastened, like an untrained calf. Bring me back, that I may be restored. For you are the Lord my God. For after I had turned away, I repented. And after I was instructed, I struck my thigh. I was ashamed, and I was confounded, because I bore the disgrace of my youth. Is Ephraim my dear son? Is he my darling child? For as often as I speak against him, I do remember him still. Therefore my heart yearns for him, and I will surely have mercy on him, says the Lord. Set up waymarks for yourself. Make yourself guideposts. Consider well the highway, the road by which you went. Return, O virgin Israel, return to these your cities. How long will you waver, O faithless daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing on the earth. A woman protects a man. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Once more they shall use these words in the land of Judah and its cities when I restore their fortunes. The Lord bless you, O habitation of righteousness, O holy hill. And Judah and all its cities shall dwell there together, and the farmers and those who wander with their flocks. For I will satisfy the weary soul, and every languishing soul I will replenish. Thereupon I awoke and looked, and my sleep was pleasant to me. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of man and the seed of beast. And it shall come to pass that I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil. So I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, The fathers have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But every one shall die for his own sin. Each man who eats sour grapes, his teeth shall be set on edge. For when the terrible rage of wild beasts came upon your people, and they were being destroyed by the bites of writhing serpents, your wrath did not continue to the end. They were troubled for a little while as a warning, and received a token of deliverance to remind them of your law's command. For he who turned toward it was saved, not by what he saw, but by you, the Savior of all. And by this also you convinced our enemies, 
that it is you who deliver from every evil. For they were killed by the bites of locusts and flies, and no healing was found for them, because they deserved to be punished by such things. But your sons were not conquered even by the teeth of venomous serpents. For your mercy came to their help and healed them, to remind them of your oracles they were bitten, and they were quickly delivered, lest they should fall into deep forgetfulness and become unresponsive to your kindness. For neither herb nor poultice cured them, but it was your word, O Lord, which heals all men. For you have power over life and death. You lead men down to the gates of Hades and back again. A man in his wickedness kills another, but he cannot bring back the departed spirit, nor set free the imprisoned soul. To escape from your hand is impossible, for the ungodly refusing to know you were scourged by the strength of your arm, pursued by unusual rains and hail and relentless storms, and utterly consumed by fire. For most incredible of all, in the water, which quenches, quenches all things, the fire had still greater effect, for the universe defends the righteous. Formerly, when you did not know God, you were in bondage to beings that by nature are no gods. But now that you have come to know God, or rather to be known by God, how can you turn back again to the weak and beggarly elemental spirits, whose slaves you want to be once more? You will observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid I have labored over you in vain. Brethren, I beg you, become as I am, for I also have become as you are. You did me no wrong. You know it was because of a bodily ailment that I preached the gospel to you at first, and though my condition was a trial, for you, a trial to you, you did not scorn or despise me, but received me as an angel of God, as Christ Jesus. What has become of, of the satisfaction you felt? For I bear you witness that... If possible, you would have plucked out your eyes and given them to me. Have I then become your enemy by telling you the truth? They make much of you, but for no good purpose, they want to shut you out, that you may make much of them. For a good purpose, it is always good to be, to be made much of, and not only when I am present with you. My little children, with whom I am again in travail until Christ be formed in you, I could wish to be present with you now and to change my tone, for I am perplexed about you. Tell me, you who desire to be under law, do you not hear the law? For it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, the son of the free woman through promise. Now this is an allegory. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar. Now Hagar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. She corresponds to the present Jerusalem, for she is in slavery with her children. But the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother, for it is written, Rejoice, O barren one, who does not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not with labor pains. For the desolate has more children than she who has a husband. Now we, brethren, like Isaac, are children of promise. But as at that time... He, he who was born according to the flesh persecuted him who was born according to the spirit, so it is now. But what does the scripture say? Cast out the slave with her cast out the slave and her son, for the son of the slave shall not inherit with the son of the free woman. So brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. Today, Jeremiah and the Book of Wisdom both speak about receiving mercy from God after a period of punishment. Jeremiah, who has been prophesying Israel's condemnation, now preaches God's mercy and love. The people who have been weeping tears of grief will weep tears of joy. Wisdom describes Israel's slavery in Egypt and wandering in the desert quite gently, saying, They were troubled for a little while as a warning. Both Wisdom and Jeremiah speak of the period of trial as an illness. Wisdom calls it the bite of a snake, and Jeremiah describes it as a deep wound and incurable hurt. The medical imagery resonates with us as it did with ancient people, since we too are required to undergo painful treatments in order to achieve greater healing. Although it would be a grave mistake to interpret all human suffering as punishment or correction from God, it can help us persevere through hard times to recognize that God is the great healer. As in the Book of Wisdom, when we look back, our hard times may indeed seem brief. Will you allow God to use your suffering in order to heal you?